Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. 15-year-old Angel Neal left for school on Friday and has not returned home. An Ananda alert has been activated and a search is on for 15-year-old Angel Neal of Buckner Road outside Maypen in Clarendon, who has been missing since Friday, April 8. She is of dark complexion, medium build, and about 170 centimeters tall. Reports are that Angel was last seen leaving her home for school at about 8 a.m. on Friday. She has not been heard from since that time. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Angel Neal is asked to contact the Maypen Police at 876-926-2208, the Police 119 emergency number, or the nearest police station. Man admits to stealing $3 million from workplace. An accounts coordinator who attempted to steal in approximately $3.2 million over a three-month period from a credit union to which he was employed claimed he was unable to start making restitution as he has spent the funds. 47-year-old Duane Latty was however given a week until April 14 to reimburse the complainant after he pleaded guilty to eight counts of larceny when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday. The court heard that Latty sold the money from the Palisandos Credit Union between January and March 2021. After pleading guilty, Latty was quickly advised by senior parish judge Lorian Cole Montague that he will have to pay back the money as it was appropriate in sentencing. Where is the money, sir? The judge quizzed Latty. I used it for all sort of stuff over a period of time, he replied. Like what other stuff? The judge asked. If you steal three million, you should be able to account for it. What did you do with the people's money? The judge asked. Sir, your liberty is hanging by a slim thread. Don't waste my time. What did you do with the money? Cole Montague pressed. I used it for expenses over a period of time, Latty replied. He further told the judge that he was not in a position to start the payments as he had no cash in his possession, but that he intends to start as soon as possible. But the judge told him, no bother with that. My soon as possible is the next hour. Latty then begged the judge to give him until the end of the month to accumulate the funds, but the judge ordered him to return next week with the funds. The judge in the meantime added conditions to Latty's $200,000 station bill. He was ordered to be fingerprinted and to surrender his travel documents with a stop order imposed on the island's ports. He is also to report to the police twice weekly. Brothers Freed of Manchester Businessman's Murder Two brothers who were charged with robbery and the murder of 76-year-old Mandeville businessman Trevor Middle in 2016 were freed when they appeared in the Manchester Circuit Court on Thursday. Alwyn Edwards and Steve Edwards were arrested and subsequently charged after a cell phone, which was reportedly taken from Middle during a robbery, was found in the possession of a female in St. Mary. The woman told the police that she had received the phone from one of the accused who had purchased it in Kingston. Middle, a black factory operator, was robbed and killed after dropping his daughter home from the airport in Ingleside, an upstill community on the outskirts of Mandeville, Manchester, on April 17, 2016. It is reported that as a result of a power outage in the parish that night, the electronic gate at the house could not be open when the Middles arrived and the pedestrian gate had to be used. Middle and his daughter went inside and had returned to the vehicle when they were attacked. His wife was also robbed. However, neither she nor the daughter were harmed. Attorney at law Peter Champagny, who represented the men, confirmed that the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions entered a conditional note, meaning it will no longer prosecute against them or a conditional discharge on the basis that the witnesses were unavailable and could not be found. He said that in the event that the witnesses become available, the prosecutors would then be at liberty to reinitiate the process. Having been in custody for more than four years awaiting trial, Champagny said that the men were relieved. It has been the position of both accused that they were innocent of allegations and they were looking forward to testing the credibility of the purported witnesses in this matter. After being incarcerated for so long, they are essentially seeking to just spend time with their families and friends and recoup, reflect and have a quiet moment, Champagny reported. 
The men were also represented by attorney Kemar Robinson. No party permits for crime hotspots, see Manchester Police. With night to curfew restrictions introduced two years ago to limit movement and slow COVID-19 transmission lifted last month, the Manchester Police Division is warning that some communities, which have seen an uptick in crimes, will not be granted party permits. Commanding Officer Superintendent Lloyd Darby made the disclosure at the Manchester Chamber of Commerce Town Hall at the Manchester Golf Course on Thursday, naming Comfort, Broadly, Hartees, Greenville, New Hall, and Mayday among the hotspots. He reminded others who have been granted permits that there are still rules governing their events. On weekends, Friday night into Saturday morning and Saturday night into Sunday morning, the cutoff time is 2 a.m. From Sunday night into Monday morning onward, the cutoff time is 12 midnight, he reminded them. The latest murder in the parish stemmed from a dispute at a music event, which Darby said went beyond the allotted time. 28-year-old construction worker Kimarley Bryan was shot dead at a shop in Beverly District in Michael last Sunday. It is reported that Bryan was attacked as a result of a dispute he had with a man at a party a day earlier. One person has so far been taken into custody in connection to the murder. Darby encouraged citizens to report illegal events and those that go beyond the stipulated time. Meanwhile, the superintendent said that up to Thursday, 13 murders had been recorded in the parish this year, up from the eight recorded for the corresponding period in 2021. He said that they were not related to gang violence, but are a result of robberies and conflicts over the sharing of spoiled among lottery scammers. Darby said that investigations are ongoing into the activities of the scammers and their use of ill-gotten wealth to operate legitimate businesses. The commanding officer said the police now have evidence that indicate that the scammers are also encouraging into robbery of small businesses such as shops and bars, particularly those with poker boxes. The small business owners are not only targeted at their business places but at their homes. Persons in the communities know that these people are business owners and that they might have cash, so they attack them at home, he said, as he encouraged persons to make themselves less vulnerable by being mindful of those around them and how they protect their property. He recommended the installation of security cameras at homes, business places, and use of trucker on vehicles and other valuable items that can be stolen. Absentee Teachers a National Education Inspectorate NEI survey has revealed that 49% of students reported their teachers were sometimes absent from online classes while schools were close to the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic. The results are contained in the COVID-19 edition of the NEI Students' Voice Survey administered between October 2020 and January 2021. The results of the survey are just now being made public. Students reported variations in the level of attendance of their teachers to classes. Overall, 50% of the students felt that their teachers were always present for class, while 49% felt that their teachers were sometimes present, the NEI report stated. According to the survey, the poor attendance of teachers to online classes was more pronounced at the secondary level. The stability of internet connection may have an effect on the online presence among teachers and students alike. However, when the data were disaggregated by level, it was found that teachers present were more consistent at the primary level. 85% of primary level students reported that their teachers were always present for class compared to 42% of the secondary students, the findings noted. The survey also revealed that during the pandemic-induced school lockdown, students were generally not pleased with the level of feedback they received from their teachers. Students were generally not content with the amount of feedback provided and submitted this as their strongest recommendation for improving lessons. Approximately one-third of them reported that they received sufficient feedback from their teachers. Students at the primary level felt they received more significant feedback than students at the secondary level read a section of the analysis of the responses of students to the NEI stakeholder satisfaction surveys. The report also noted less than a third of the students felt that they received sufficient feedback from their teachers, 
while two-thirds of them felt it was inadequate. Further analysis revealed that 59% of primary level students felt that feedback was sufficient compared to 26% of the secondary students. According to the NEI survey, students were given an opportunity to suggest one thing their teacher could do to make their class better. The survey said the strongest recommendations that emerged from students' comments were that teachers could provide more effective feedback to students and utilize more creative methods in the delivery of online lessons. Students also suggested better management of some online classes. A few stated their preference for the resumption of face-to-face -face classes. A few of the students stated that their teachers were doing as best as they could and they found nothing that needed to be changed. In response to the result of the Students' Voice Survey, Winston Simmitt, head of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, said since he assumed the post of president in August 2021, no principals have filed complaints with their teachers' union about poor attendance of educators and inadequate feedback to their students. I am not aware of the research that was done, but online teaching and learning presented many challenges for both teachers and students, Simit stated. When asked, based on the data, whether high school teachers were shirking their responsibilities in comparison to their primary school counterparts, the JTA boss said, What high school students may want from teachers, the teachers may not be able to do that, as they ought to be more independent at that level, while primary school students, on the other hand, are way more appreciative of what their teachers do for them and require more constant engagement as well. The NEI surveys were administered to over 10,000 students in 23 schools across the island and approximately 11% or 1,125 students responded to the survey. 17 schools were at the primary level and 6 were at the secondary level. The response rates from individual schools varied from 2% to 61%, with an overall response rate of 6% at the primary level and 13% at the secondary level. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.